Hello everyone, this is Fidemaster Victor Neustroyev. Today we start in time and uh, well, yes, it's uh, 11 it's 11 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time and uh, today I'm going to conduct a workshop uh, where I'm going, uh, which I decided to devote to a stalemate. You will learn more about stalemate, how to achieve it, which pieces to sacrifice. And of course, if you are a winner, I mean, if you are a winning side, how to avoid um, a stalemate. Please let me know if the sound and video quality is good. Uh, by the end of this uh, workshop, I'm going to conduct a quiz and the winner of this quiz uh, will be able to claim a one hour um, chess lesson with a feeder master from our school chesslands.com. So I'm streaming this uh, workshop on uh, several platforms. I will be uh, pay attention to Twitch, of course, and uh, uh, the one that is on our website, chesslands.com. Okay, guys, please let me know if the sound is good. And uh, another thing I wanted to know is, uh, do you follow Chess Olympiad? Okay. Okay, I see Barry Phillips is already here. So I kindly ask you guys to tell me if the sound is good, video should be okay. And actually in a few minutes we are about to start. First of all, if speaking about Chess Olympiad, What do you think? Who will be the winner? In my opinion, uh, the United States, of course. So, so there is no Russia, no China. That's why I believe uh, they are favorites. Maybe India as well, but I still believe that United States will be the winners. Today is only round three, so they have a lot of time uh, to change everything. According to what I see, there are a lot of um, teams who won both games. Uh, including the United States, of course. Okay. Yes, and... Uh, yeah, I think this is the strongest team. However, uh, there are also two other favorites. It's uh, India and Ukraine. Ukraine is traditionally one of the strongest teams. So, and of course, of course, India. This is the country where chess were invented, and uh, now they still have uh, a lot of players uh, who can. Uh, well, you, you see, even Wisha Anand is not participating in the game because he. Well. He, maybe he is not in the best condition. He actually got retired, and I absolutely understand it. But maybe for Chess Olympiad, he could join back. Okay, let's start with our workshop. So, what about uh, what is a stalemate? You probably know 
what stalemate means. Uh, this is a well, if you just a sec, if you uh, received my emails, you know, and actually, if you are a chess player, uh, you know the rules. It's such a situation where you uh where your king is not under a check and you have no other legal moves so for example this is the first position we are going to discuss if we look at this position uh black has two queens so white cannot checkmate uh, this king something like that doesn't work they just escape so the only thing white can do is to fight for a draw how to fight uh, for a draw uh, stalemate of course or perpetual check is another option but stalemate in this case and uh, first of all you should understand where which legal moves you have the queen has a lot of legal moves so what means that white should retreat of the um, get rid of this queen and the king has only one legal move, it's this. Somehow we should force one of the enemy queens to control this a4 square. And, uh, well, it can be queen b5, you may say. But after queen b5, they, if they take it's a stalemate, that's right. But if not, then how to continue? Deliver another check. So every time you decide to sacrifice the queen uh, in order to get a stalemate, uh, you should uh, realize what happens in case if they don't uh, accept this sacrifice, but for example, play something else. For example, in this position, queen d1 leads to a checkmate because the king has no squares to escape. The only legal move is to take this queen and now the king cannot go to a4. This is a stalemate. Yeah. Thank you for your suggestion. It's queen d1. Okay, let's continue with the next position, uh, which I'm sure you'll find uh, quite simple. The logic is pretty much the same. So what do you think, guys? Queen d4? Or what? Well, queen d4, queen takes queen, and the, the king can now move to f1. Here you should definitely notice that um, pawns are immobilized. They cannot move. The king can only move to f1, and the queen has a lot of squares to move, so the queen should be sacrificed, and white should also eliminate uh, their option to move the king to f1. And the answer comes just in seconds, if you know what to look for. Queen d3, if they don't take, for example, the king goes away, you can capture their enemy queen and uh, win the game. And if they take, it's a stalemate. So you see, the king cannot go to f1. Okay, we are going to continue with such uh, simple examples, and then I'm uh, going to demonstrate something more complicated. This is actually the exact case um, where I'm going to uh, explain the technique of how to get stalemated. Uh, after that, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the games played by masters and grandmasters where a stalemate was achieved. You may say that these are quite rare cases, but no, it happens even in top um, uh, players' games. Of, of course, it happens uh, a lot among uh, beginners, among club players, and especially in blitz games. But sometimes it happens even in uh, top grandmasters games so please think about this position and tell me what you should do 
it's black to move. Okay, okay. Let me. Uh, while you are thinking, uh, let me explain this strategy. What you should do. Uh, what is your order of actions to get stalemated? Here, Alex suggests, for example, knight to d2, but knight d2, rook h7, mate. So. Here, you see, first of all, you should uh, realize what your opponent is threatening. And they are threatening with a mate. This or that. Uh, and I don't really see a good defense against it. Maybe rook h8, but rook h8 means you have to play this passive position. And they will definitely find how to... Um, uh, how to gain the material, for example, if you play this move, rook e7, and they take the advantage of the pin. Yes, you can unpin then, but uh, if you leave, if you move the knight away from e4, you lose the pawn on f6. For example, rook h8, rook e7, let's say queen c1 in order to unpin, uh, king goes to h2, let's say knight is now hanging and has to move, let's say there, but queen f6 this time is a checkmate. Okay, so there is a good comment by Ritkiman Barmer uh, to sacrifice. Uh, but, well, and what about the knight? The knight is still alive. Okay, so the algorithm is like that. So first get rid of almost all of your pieces except your uh, queen or rooks or the pieces that are pinned, so you should uh, only leave the pieces that you can sacrifice uh, quickly, with a temper, with checks, or something like that. Make sure all your pawns are blocked and can move. Sometimes uh, the pawns uh, can be pinned as well. The, in this exact position, both pawns are blocked. But if you provoke the enemy uh, bishop or the enemy queen to move, Uh, then the pawn can move and it won't be a stalemate. Okay, make sure your king has no legal moves. This is the case. The king has no legal moves. So, and now you should sacrifice. Uh, you should sacrifice pieces. The king has no moves, pawns are blocked, let's sacrifice pieces. So, if speaking about that concrete, uh, this concrete position, you should get rid of these two. Uh, which of them sacrifice first? Usually you sacrifice uh, less valuable pieces and leave the queen last. But sometimes uh, there are some exclusions. For example, here you cannot sacrifice the knight with a check. Okay, extra fun rocks uh, suggest a good combination, but actually it's a kind of a mistake. It is a mistake because when you play uh, with your, well, every time the queen goes here, bishop goes to d1, either to take the queen or to block this check. And after the bishop goes to d1, the g pawn can move and uh, the concept of getting a stalemate ruins. That's why here the move order should be slightly different. While there is no moves with uh, the knight that deliver a check, the first option is rook b1. Rook b1, king has to move to h2. You see? This time it doesn't make sense to block with the bishop. 
Now let's, uh, if they block with the bishop, then queen takes, king h2 and queen h1 is a checkmate, of course. So rook b1, they can only move the king to h2. Then you sacrifice uh, the rook on h1. That was correct. Uh, so several people suggested um, this uh, idea in their lines. Uh, and uh, then you continue with knight g3, because the king is on h1, and uh, while the king is there, you may sacrifice your knight with a check. So knight is, was such a piece that can be hardly sacrificed with a check, and while the king is on h1, let's take the advantage of this opportunity. This is actually a fork. And if they ignore and don't accept the sacrifice, we take the queen and play for a win. That's why they are most likely to take. Now the queen left. We cannot exchange queens. Then the g pawn will be available, um, will get some legal moves. Uh, we should sacrifice the queen. Every time we push our queen to the first rank, they block with the bishop. This is what we should avoid. But because of the f pawn, uh, left its position and is now on g3, we can sacrifice the queen on g2 and they have to take it. And then this is a stalemate. Let me show you. So first you sacrifice less valuable pieces, but you cannot sacrifice the knight with a check, so that's why rook goes first. King h2, you see? So king h2 has to be played because of this move, you take with the queen and deliver a checkmate on h1. So rook b1, king goes to h2. Rook h1, he has no other option but to accept this sacrifice. Now knight g3, not f2, g3. And uh, here there was a good comment. Well, actually, no. Uh, here, if they do not accept the sacrifice, you take the queen and play for a win. That's why they have to take. The last thing is to sacrifice the queen, and it's actually usually easy because queen has a lot of options to move. And uh, queen takes on g2. This is this is a check. They have to take, uh, and then you see your neither the king nor these pawns have any legal moves. So this is a stalemate. Did you understand the concept? or the algorithm of how to sacrifice pieces. No, I hope everything clear and we can continue with the next uh, game. This is actually a simple position that I actually wanted to include in a quiz, but then found something complicated. So by the end of the webinar, well, maybe last 10 minutes, I'll provide you with uh, five different positions where your task will be to uh, suggest Your task will be to suggest uh, the solutions, and uh, the uh, so a person who suggests more uh, more proper reliance uh, will uh, get a one-hour class with one of our feeder masters. Okay, so this position, white to move, yeah, this one is simple. Here you see the king has no legal moves. It's stalemated. Only the rook can move. That's why you should be looking for uh, moves with this rook. At the same time, you understand that their next move is rook a1, which is a checkmate. So, that's why uh, you should make such a move which doesn't allow them to checkmate on a1. And this move is rook a8, of course. So rook a1 cannot be played, moving the rook to a different place is possible, but 
If that happens, you deliver a check on a3, chasing the king away and then promote. There is no checkmate, let me show you. There is no checkmate on the first rank in this case. Because you take the pawn on f2, because uh, you um, before that you chase the king away. So rook e8 uh, is the first move. They uh, have to accept it, otherwise uh, white wins. And now h8 equals queen. And the rook e1 is still unavailable. So not h8 equals rook, but h8 equals queen, because if you promote to a rook, they deliver a checkmate on a1. But here with the queen you control it. So black has no other option but to take, otherwise white will be playing for a win. And uh, then only the king left with no legal moves. Okay, fine. Uh, I actually found, uh, well, I found a lot, but chose only five games uh, where stalemate happened. The first game is the game between uh, Larry Melvin Evans and Samuel Ryshevsky. Some people say this is the most famous game that ended with a stalemate. Usually, when the game ends with a stalemate, uh, it contains a lot of moves, and this game is not an, uh, an exclusion, not an exception. So we are not going to analyze it, we are going to um, analyze only the final combination or, or maybe some critical points of the game. So white is better, not much, but finally this tactical strike was applied and then uh, here you see this uh, knight cannot be taken, the rook is hanging. And after that it's approximately equal. And then black starts out playing white. Finally, they initiated the king side attack. White decided to attack the queen side, and black focused on the king side attack, which was a right decision. In this position, they played bishop b5. What is a mistake? Well, probably they thought that after a takes b5, they can just take on d7, but uh, I don't believe it's a good idea, even if that happens, rook e1, rook e2 with a strong attack. So bishop b5, queen g5, intermediate move, g3, a takes b5, rook d7, rook e1, almost like what I said, and rook f7, rook e3, white continues with h4, chasing the queen away, rook e2, an intermediate check, king goes to h1, and uh, in this position, what would you do if you were black, actually? Could you please tell me? Okay, so Larry suggests if I was black, I would probably go queen g6. Well, that makes sense. Queen should go to g6. So you, you see, sometimes I'm looking up because my uh, second monitor is located in front of me. Okay, fine. So yes, uh, queen g6 is the best option and this move should be played, of course. Then uh, what? They cannot take anyway, so the qu the rook is hanging, uh, probably the game could continue like that, queen e6, threatening with a mate actually, rook h8, maybe king g6, and uh, I believe in this position white has to exchange uh, queens and lose the game because of be, uh, because of the, uh, because they are down the material. In the game it was queen g3, and after that, 
well this is a blunder yes and after that white was able to apply tactical combination and end up with a stalemate could you please uh, tell me this tactical combination what would you do if you were white Yeah, you may need some time to think, of course. I'm just checking if there are any comments. Oh. Okay, so Queen H8, Queen H8, uh huh. Uh huh, I see your comments. Okay, so Queen H8, well. If here they play king g6, uh, queen g7 is a mate, of course. So they have to accept it. Then rook f8, king goes there, then these, king escapes, then these, these move. And with rook f6, you can keep checking. Almost the same thing happened in the game, actually. So Queen H8 was correct, but uh, Larry play Larry Evans played even better. He played Queen G8. If King H6 in this position, it's a checkmate in two, of course. So uh, King takes G8. So Queen G8, King takes G7, and then Rook G7. This is a little bit stronger because um, it requires uh, less calculations from us, from White. Now doesn't really matter who takes. It's a stalemate. If the king goes away, or maybe it goes there, we continue checking with the rook on the seventh rank. So this tactical motive is called desperado, like a wild rook that keeps checking uh, the king. Uh, doesn't really matter where it goes. Here it's just simple. The rook stays uh, every uh, stays on the seventh rank and keeps checking the king. So and when they accept it, it's a stalemate, of course doesn't really matter uh, where the queen is I mean uh, for example in this case if queen takes g7 it's still a stalemate because the queen controls g1 square and these two squares are controlled with the rook okay fine the next example is the game between Anatoly Karpov and Garry Kasparov we are not going to analyze the game but uh, uh, finally, they uh, played this end game with three minor pieces versus a rook, which is uh, slightly better for white, but there is no clear victory. And Gary Kasparov, who is actually black, let's actually flip the board. 
Gary Kasparov, who is black, wants to sacrifice his rook for the bishop. In such a case, he gets a theoretical draw because two knights uh, cannot uh, checkmate the king. And then, finally, they came to this position, where it's black to move. What would you suggest if you were black in this position? So guys, okay, so rook a6 is your suggestion, and yes, you're absolutely right, this is what Gary played, rook a6, and uh, uh, yeah, rook a6, let me play it on the board. Then uh, it was king to f7. But if it was king to e5, well, for some reason I can't uh, make this move. Okay, let me uh, do something. Uh -huh. So if let's say king e5 here. For some reason, Liches doesn't allow me to make a move. Wow. Okay, let me set up the position. Okay, finally I was able to do it. So, here, if rook a6 is played, they can move the king to e5, to e7, or block with the knight, but not with the bishop. If they block with the bishop, it's just rook takes e6. In the game, they played king f7, and uh, this is where Gary Kasparov played rook f6, sacrificing the rook, because if king takes, this is a stalemate. If the king doesn't take, it's... Let's say the king moves somewhere away, it's rook f5. Gary could sacrifice the rook and end up with the king versus two knights. And that should be a draw. If, let's say, king e5, then king gets the g7 square in this case. The most uh, strong move here was knight e6. But it's still fine. 
For example, he could continue with rook a1 back and then try to pin and sacrifice his rook on f5. The game could continue. Okay, fine. Uh, the next game is the game between Karl Schlechter and David Yanovsky. Well, we are, of course, are not going to uh, calculate, uh, to analyze the whole game. Let's just talk about the end game. So they finally reached uh, this position. Uh, black is better and playing for a win, but not everything is clear. Here, if, for example, uh, rook a7, rook takes f4, g takes h3, and uh, g, rook g4, what then? If, for example, king f7, it's king h2, and the h3 pawn is uh, lost, after which it should be a draw. King h5 was played instead. Rook g3, king h4. What would you do in this position in order to save it? What's your opinion? Because if you decide to play king h2, rook a2, and you lose your rook. And there is no stalemate, of course. Okay, guys, yeah, I see your comments on uh, Twitch and uh, or your comments on YouTube channel of uh, thechessworld.com. So, this is what you can actually, um, uh, so you can keep uh, posting on uh, at chesslands.com masterclass video. So... I see your comments, it's fine, and uh, I kindly recommend you to stay to the very end, because there will be a quiz, and uh, you may um, gain a prize, uh, which is a one-hour class with one of our coaches. And there is also something else I prepared for you, actually. Okay, so now I'm sure you may see my screen, and uh, uh, this is our uh, school's website. Here you can always uh, schedule a free chess lesson. It's a, a 20 minutes class uh, where you you can uh, let's say you click here, you can choose a coach you want to work with, uh, and uh, you can ask any your coach about anything. So, like, what should I do to get better in chess? Uh, what do you recommend me? What openings do you recommend me? Oh, well, oh, what else? You can let, let's analyze the game or let's play the games. And this is what you can do for free. But actually, it's limited to 20 minutes. You can also click uh, book your lesson. For example, book your lesson. And uh, choose, uh, choose the coach that you want. For example, let's say feeder master Nikola Yordanov, who recently conducted the webinar and choose the timing. So he has only three uh, these days next week. Uh, for example, who else? Uh, Julian Nieta is international master from Mexico. His English is perfect. So you see, you can almost book any time. Uh, international master Beryl Yubzlatanovic. So still a lot of options. Feeder Master Armin Musovic, and um, so yeah, just a few options here left. They are quite busy now. Uh, well, who else? Uh, gr even Grandmaster Sergei Zablotsky. Uh, yeah, currently he is participating in uh, the tournament. That's why there are no. Yeah, only starting from August 16, there are a few options. He he will be back, and then he will be able to uh, continue our classes. Okay, so this is the list of coaches, and we are going to add another strong international master soon. So, for, uh, for example, this guy, international master Mauricio Santana, uh, is 
participating in Olympiad. That's why he you cannot book a class with him right now. He is playing for Costa Rica team. And these guys are available. Okay, fine, let's continue. So rook b3 may be one of the solutions. Well, if you play rook b3, the game is likely to continue with this move, then this, then this. Maybe actually, uh, no, g5 is a good move. So what then? Keep your rook there, g4. If g3, of course, you check, but uh, they can deliver a check. King goes there and then play g3, because if you take it, it's another check. Uh, king has to move and the rook is lost. So rook b3 doesn't work. Uh, yeah, rook g6 is the best move. Rook g6, in the game it was played rook a1, king h2, rook a2. King is now cut off. And finally, well, g7 is hanging. They have either to retreat back, after which you can just uh, repeat the position. Or they have to play rook g2, which they actually did. Their idea of this move was to win after this exchange. So here white has to leave a position and black promotes. For example, king f2, king h3. And if king f3, just the pawn goes. Uh, if uh, king goes there, it's g5. King h1, g4, king g1, g king g3. So, uh, again, uh, white loses their position. For example, here, 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 and that's it. So, that's why here white decided to use their last chance, and that move was rook to h6, sacrificing the rook. The king is stalemated, that's why you can sacrifice the rook. g takes h6, and the game ended in a draw. If the king moves, Let's say the king moves there, it's rook h3, king has to take, well, or maybe the king can go there, but it's still a draw, uh, because this uh, pawn on g7 can be easily stopped. You know that uh, when the king stands in front of the pawn, the h, uh, g, a and B pawns cannot be promoted. If speaking about the other pawns, it depends on... Uh, uh, it depends on the concrete position. So, uh, rook h6 if king g4, it can be rook, still rook h3 with the same idea. Against one pawn with rooks on the board, white is able to draw the game. Okay, the next example is uh, the game between uh, Klaus Wokenfass and Ulf Andersson. So they finally played this in game where white was winning. So let's flip the board. Here white was winning. Maybe not actually much, but rook e5. King d4. And, uh, well, let's uh, start from the very beginning. So, first of all, it uh, looks like a draw, but uh, White it and Alexei drave, and uh, Wisha was outplayed, but finally was able to save the game with a stalemate. So, let's start from this position. Uh, H3 in order to expose the king, G3 was played c5, uh, d5, it takes d5, c takes d5, c4, so the pawn on d5 is hanging, black is clearly better, knight c3 in order to protect it, queen c5, adding more pressure and attacking the rook as well, rook a2, knight e7 with the idea to take with the knight, rook a b2, finally knight takes d5, rook b5, 
and uh, this is where black decides to take on c3 because if this queen uh, is taken then knight b1 and this the white queen is hanging a white queen m moves but the rook is lost so finally black get uh, got two rooks and uh, and the bishop uh, of course you may say what about this move well, if this move, then the C pawn plays the most significant role and can be promoted. That's why here knight d4. Uh, it's not a sacrifice, of course. Uh, and I doubt that something like that can be played. Probably queen b7 then, or maybe knight f5, knight f5. King g6 to protect on f5. Queen b7, bishop d4, queen b6, attacking the knight. But who cares? It's f6 and let them capture the knight. c3. So you see, he is trying to create a stalemate. Uh, this piece can't, can't move. The king has only one square. Bishop d3. c2, sacrificing it. Rook c2 and rook hc8. Quite a logical idea with the intention to play rook c1 and gain the queen. But bishop f5. Rook takes f5 and g4, taking the advantage of the spin. Well, of course, uh, maybe something like that could be played, but uh, then bishop c8. So it's not enough material. Anyway, rook c1, queen has to take, then rook takes f2. Look at the position. King goes to h1 to avoid the discovered attack. And if the rook moves, the king would have no squares. Bishop e5 attacking here, the king now can move to g1 back. But queen g1 protecting here. Rook g2. And uh, this is where I want to ask you, what would you do if you were white? Let's uh, forget that our goal is to get a stalemate. But... How would you draw the game uh, with a stalemate or in a different way? For example, if you exchange everything but uh, leave these two pieces, the bishop and the h3 pawn, the king on each one can successfully stop it. So how would you play here as white? So queen b1, queen b1, uh, let's say king to g7. And in case of queen b7, it's king to h6 and no more checks. And then you lose on h2. So the pawn is uh, going to be so dangerous. No. Okay. Any other ideas?
Okay, guys. So, queen takes rook? No, queen takes rook is not enough. For example, queen takes rook, take there, and then what? Uh, let's say... Well, because it's the F pawn, it can be promoted. Let's say this. H3. Uh, king H4. Maybe F4. F4. Then uh, the task is just to get uh, to force this king to move. Well, actually, no. Let's play bishop C7 in order to stop the pawn. And what's then? King F3, king H4 goes there. Okay. Mm, let me play this move. Then king h3 in order to not lose. Then these king goes there, and then these. So finally, they have to sacrifice one of these two pawns. And uh, when they sacrifice the pawn on a5, they then lose the pawn on uh, h3, for example, like that. And then the g for pawn and black promotes. Okay, so here the answer is a5. So can you imagine it? Uh, Wish it was okay to sacrifice his queen here. How to play? Well. Of course, something like that doesn't work. For example, king g5, these. And in order to stop the pawn, they have to play bishop d4. But then king h1, and uh, well, what then? a7 is played, and after bishop h7, it's a stalemate. That's why king g7 was played. a6, bishop b8 to stop it. King h1. So you see, the king has, uh, after bishop a7, the king would have no legal moves. King g8, king g1, king f8, so they repeated the position, and finally g5 was played. There, g6, f4, g7, so they have to stop this pawn, otherwise uh, white uh, promotes to a queen. g8, king g8, and finally a7. Uh, here the bishop has to take. If f3, it's just a takes b8 equals queen, and white is winning. So f3 uh, cannot be played, instead bishop a7, and this is a stalemate. So you see, um, we should calculated this line to the very end, when he decided to sacrifice the queen and played a5 move. Because then he forced the king to go to h1, and this bishop has to control this diagonal in order to prevent the a pawn from uh, promotion. This is how a, check, a stalemate can be achieved. Okay, guys. Uh, so, are you ready for a quiz? So, I will be waiting your comments here at uh, chestlands.com or on uh, Twitch or YouTube. So these are three resources I am reading at the moment. And uh, so I accept only, okay, let's say I give two minutes, maybe, okay, I'll give two minutes for the first position. And uh, your task is to suggest a line with no mistakes. In such a case, your uh, answer will be correct. So this is the first position. It's black to move. And I give you two minutes for this position to find how black mates, uh, makes a draw. It can be a stalemate or it can be something else, but it should be a draw. Okay, timer starts. What do you think black should do in order to achieve a draw?
Okay, how much time? We have 40 seconds left. Okay. Okay, so we see I have only one answer and this answer is correct. So it's queen g8. They have to the, the, the pawn is pinned. So they have to play something in order to oh well maybe queen b5 in order to push the pawn. Not king f3 of course, but well it doesn't matter which move they play. Black sacrifices the queen for that pawn. If white uh, does something else, then it's still a draw. So queen e8, for example, queen g8, they exchange now, sorry. And the king stays in the corner, so white is unable to uh, take any of the pawns. And if uh, this queen is taken, the king is stalemated. Okay, so my congratulations to extra fun rocks. That was correct. Uh, let's continue with the next one. And uh, here the question is how white draws the game in case if black plays rook takes h7. So your task is to draw the game with white pieces. Time starts. Okay, actually, uh huh. There was also a correct answer by Wenli Huang about the first position. So now I'm checking all the comments. Okay, time is over, so let's check the answers. So here, yes, uh, it's correct. Chiranjib, Barry Phillips and Extra Fun uh, Rocks are correct, as well as uh, Wenli Huang and uh, Samuel Gu, or Ju Gu. Mm -hmm. So the answer is rook takes f7, threatening with a mate. Well, they doesn't really matter what they do. They probably have to take, otherwise you checkmate or you gain a rook. So probably they take, doesn't really matter with which rook, and then you play b5. They can play anything, but white has no legal moves. 
Correct. Uh, position number three, where it's uh, white to move. Two minutes started. Here you draw the game either with a perpetual check or stalemate. Let me make some notes. So, 30 seconds left. Well, maybe it's a long combination, that's why there are no answers. Okay, guys, any suggestions? No? Let me give you one minute more. Oh, uh, if you suggest queen f8, please continue the line because it may be even a long line. Okay. So, no ideas except, well, queen f7, queen f8 are just the ideas. I can't accept them as answers because they, they do not uh, immediately leave, uh, lead to a stalemate. But let's, uh, well, okay, nobody nobody suggested the line so let me explain so first of all this doesn't make sense after rook takes f7 at least the f pawn the g pawn can move it doesn't work uh queen f8 mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so extra fun uh, rocks was closer uh, but uh, it's not, <laughs> I cannot accept this answer anyway. So queen of fate is a correct move, but uh, the line, let's talk about the line. So if the king goes here, it's a checkmate, of course, we shouldn't analyze it at all. King f6, of course, queen goes to h8, that was correct. The If king is 7 it's just a repetition like that queen f8 queen h8 that's why king goes to f5 and this is where a g4 that's right this is how we get rid of the pawn what moves do they have so first of all if they move with the king to f4 at least we can uh, 
what we can do. We can checkmate actually with queen f6, king e4, and rook d4. If the king goes to e4, we can checkmate directly with this move. Well, actually, with king, after king f4, we can still play rook d4, which is with a checkmate. So they have to take it. Then you see, we have the king is stalemated, this pawn is immobilized, rook and queen left. So we sacrifice the more less valuable, which is a rook. What happens then? If they play king to e4, it's a checkmate with queen e5. Same thing happens in case of king, king f4. So they have to take this rook. And after that, here the most important move in this position is queen c8. This is a double attack. Another important feature of this position is that after king f4, queen c1, queen takes c1 is a check. Because if it wasn't a check, rook h3 would lead to a checkmate. But because it's a check, uh, white is likely to win this game. That's why here, after this check, they have to take our queen, and then this is a stalemate. So, long combination. So, uh, we still have two leaders, Wenli Huang with two uh, correct answers, and Extra Fun Rocks also with two answers. Samuel Gu, uh, Barry Phillips, and Chiron Jeep, only one correct answer. Let's continue with, uh, with uh, position number four. It's, uh, it's uh, wide to move, the task is to draw the game, and uh, this time I give you three minutes. Okay, so waiting for your answers, one minute left. <laughs> so I see I see the answer of John and extra fun rocks. Okay, who else? Okay, Wenli, uh, one move is not enough, please uh, suggest the line. Mm 
Okay, so let me show you. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay, fine. Uh, so let me show the solution here. Well, first of all, d6 and this pawn should be taken right away. Otherwise, it's either d7 or d takes d7 and the pawn is promoted. E takes d6 and king d3. You are absolutely right about this move. What happens then? Then you successfully stop the pawns and you are about to promote this pawn. Uh, well, uh, only the bishop can stop this pawn. And the only way with the bishop to stop it is to take on g3 and then continue with d5 in order to stop the pawn a6 and the, finally they play this move. You see, with d pawn and uh, with d5 pawn the king cannot move there. So you play a7, you provoke them to take with the bishop, so they protect the pawn on d4, and the king has no squares to move to. Okay, so... Um, okay, I give one points for uh, Wen Li Huang, uh, extra fun rocks, and uh, John Wogan. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, okay, fine. Let's continue. This is the last one. This is the last position where white makes a draw. I can give you four minutes for this. Yeah, four minutes for this last position. Time starts. How white should stalemate themselves? So it's white to move, they should get a stalemate. Or they can draw the game in a different way. Okay, so waiting for your answers.
Any suggestions? Well, it's hard to find, of course. Even the engine doesn't see it first. Mm -hmm. So Barry, well, uh, Barry, you are looking how to draw the game with white pieces here. If black plays h2 in this position, they win, of course, but it's white to move. Okay, I'll give you one extra minute. Maybe this one is too complicated. Okay. Yeah, time is over. So, any suggestions? Okay, I'll give you a hint. Because we need to find a winner, I'll give you a hint. The first move is knight g3, of course. Uh, well, here, for example, playing h2 doesn't make sense. In such a case, it's knight to h1. King has to take and bishop f4. So you sacrifice the bishop for that pawn and promote the a pawn. It's faster than your opponent. Well, let me just show you. Bishop h2, king h2, a5 h3 a6 b takes a6 king takes a6 king g2 b7 h2 b8 equals queen h1 equals queen queen takes d6 for example and uh, in case of this move you continue with queen a3 and play for a win at least white has a draw but they are playing for a win in this position so knight uh, g3 they have to take this knight and your next move is bishop d2. Then black may continue with h2 or g2, doesn't really matter. How to play them? I give you one minute, please suggest the answer after h2. Okay, the time is over. Uh, well, yeah, let's uh, let me check the answers. And the only answer, which is actually a correct answer, is about 
the cage yes it's bishop a5 and b4 in order to uh, to block all the pawns bishop a5 well what they can do they can only move the king or promote b4 and nobody can reach the king in one move so queen f1 doesn't work the king has no legal moves the pawn has no legal moves black plays something but it's a stalemate so today's winner is extra fun rocks with four or five you can message me at uh, school at chestlands.com and claim your uh, price okay okay once again guys now ah, well, just one more thing i wanted to uh, you to learn so we talked about how to get stalemated but we didn't uh, talk about how to avoid a stalemate there is only one rule give your opponent enough room to move and make sure they cannot sacrifice all their pieces uh, in the forced way so i mean with checks or with some uh, threats okay uh so let me close it there is something i would like to share with you as well so please look at the screen uh, now you can see my screen and uh, mm, uh, there is a course i recently created about uh, how to find tactical strikes uh, i mean how how to find stalemate this course covers the position that we didn't analyze and they are divided into uh, different levels so simple combinations medium difficulty combination advanced complex and finally the example of uh, the games and uh, you can get this course for free it's quite a short course about uh, how many maybe one hour even maybe less than one hour so you can get uh, this course uh, if only you um, click on the link that i'll provide you in the chat just in a few seconds uh, i also want you to understand that you get to skillshare.com platform and they may ask you to get a subscription you may or you may not get it in uh, if you want just this course it's fine you can uh, watch it just using my link but if you are looking for some other courses on their platforms uh, um, uh, doesn't matter if they are related to chess or not you should uh, get this subscription but for this course you don't need if only you use my special link and uh, another thing i want you to uh, remember oh first of all yeah you remember we talk about this guy mauricio santana uh, he is playing for costa rica team uh, on the first board he is the best uh, chess player from costa rica in the first game he won the second he lost to grandmaster uh, peralta fernander and the third game he is playing uh, so now i kindly uh, recommend you to book um, classes with our coaches you can either order a free class a tw 20 minutes class for example here uh, below if you click on this link uh, you can uh, book a class with uh, international master uh, borel yuzlatanovic if you want to choose another coach just go to the main page uh, click schedule your free chess lesson choose the coach and book a free class uh, if you decided to work on chess uh, and uh, have regular classes we have some discounts you can just uh, go here uh, book your uh, lesson and choose a coach or you can uh, go to bundles and um, pay for a four eight or 16 classes um, and then book your class with a student in such a case you get a discount of two uh, or four dollars per class okay so that was Fido master victor Neustroyev and uh, the webinar what that was devoted to stalemate how to avoid it i'm sure you enjoyed it so uh, there will be no event next sunday but there will be uh, the sunday after that so please stay at chestlands.com and uh, 
I'm sure you will enjoy chess and also improve your chess performance. So uh, wait for the link. I'll share it in just a sec. I'll share it everywhere. Here. And here. Okay, that's it for today.